Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 10th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today I took a little bit of time to take a look at network traffic from macOS 11, the up and coming version of Apple's operating system. It's available as an open beta, so anybody can download it and play with it. And uh, I mostly took a look at network traffic to see if there's anything odd or interesting. Nothing really all that different from prior versions of macOS. What I sort of found probably the most interesting is the additional use of crease in TLS client hellos. Now, crease is a feature in TLS that's somewhat new and kind of intended to weed out non-compliant implementations. In TLS, a server or a client is essentially supposed to ignore unrecognized options that the other side sends. So if the other side offers a cipher that doesn't exist or a TLS version that doesn't exist, well, you're just supposed to ignore it. And the reason for this is to future-proof your implementation. So if an option is later introduced or a new TLS version, that your implementation is still able to deal with that new version. Well, in the past, that wasn't done right often. So what TLS started to do is uh, to introduce essentially sort of random non-existing options. And that's usually referred to as crease. Now, uh, so far you may have seen this, for example, as ciphers, because you see a cipher, Wireshark sort of nicely calls them crease. But what uh, Mac OS 11 does, it also adds a random TLS version. So you may want to take a quick look at this if you're doing TLS interception to make sure this is not causing any problems for whatever solution you have implemented. Crease is defined in RFC 8701, so it is an official standard. And yes, while I've seen it in ciphers and options, never really seen it sort of as a TLS version, but may have just missed it in some recent operating systems. And if you're still wondering when and how to apply all the patches that Microsoft released yesterday, well, uh, there may be a solution for you and that's moving to Microsoft's Azure cloud service. Microsoft announced that they will be starting to offer a service that will patch Windows servers uh, hosted in Azure automatically. Now, they're starting with recent versions of Microsoft Windows Server Data Center, but they say they will add additional versions of Windows in the future. This is something that you will have to enable. So of course, it's not automatic, uh, but once enabled, patches will be applied automatically if they are security patches or if they are labeled as critical. If needed, the system will also be rebooted. So you have to be a little bit careful there that you don't enable this automatic patching feature for systems that can't reboot at random times. And security company in teaser is observing an interesting attack that is going after exposed Docker systems. Now, uh, this attack conducted by a group that calls itself Team TNT is actually using a legitimate uh, management tool called Weavescope. And also Weaveworks is the name of the company that produces this tool. Now, in teaser is stating that it's the first time that a legitimate tool is being used for this type of attack. Kind of doubt that's the case, like these attacks against exposed Docker APIs are pretty much old news and uh, something that is happening for a while now. And I've seen various open source tools and so being used in these attacks. Maybe the first time that a commercial tool is uh, being used to launch these attacks, but uh, not even clear about this because often you don't necessarily know what tool was used to access the Docker API. 
What may of course help the attacker here is they have to install this agent within the doc container and by using a, using a legitimate tool of course they're less likely going to trigger any kind of anti-malware. But if you are exposing your Docker API ports, if you're not protecting them, then well, uh, that's probably your least problem to have up-to-date anti-malware running on the system. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.